As Captain Owens what if you don't know him already, you will get to know him by the end of this thing of the year, right? Take us away. That's better, thank you very much. And by the way, it's uh, Admiral. I haven't been a captain in a long time, but uh, I appreciate the, uh, the honorific. Welcome, Star Trek fans. Uh, I'd just like to show you a little something before we get going. Beam down for away missions. Work to improve yourself. Enjoy social events. Make a difference. have what it takes to be a Starfleet officer. Alright, that, that could just set the tone a little bit for what we're doing here today. So this is a Star Trek fan meetup. Welcome, Star Trek fans. Thank you for joining us here today. I'm really pleased to see so many of you. Are you a Cardassian? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's very impressive. I enjoy that. Thank you. Alright, so, as I said, I am Admiral Owen Smart, Commanding Officer of the USS Dauntless Regional Coordinator, Region 8 Starfleet International Star Trek Fan Association Incorporated. I will explain all of those things during the next half an hour so we'll know what all of that means. So, the thing about being a, a Star Trek fan is that it's something you don't want to do alone. Right? How do you do that? That's the most difficult thing, is being a Star Trek fan alone. Now, we can look at Star Trek and get some inspiration for how to solve that problem. The way you make your life easier, the way you solve problems is you rely on your crew. In order to be a Star Trek fan, you need a crew. So out here, even in the Delta Quadrant of South Africa, which can be really, really tricky to be a Star Trek fan because there aren't that many of us around, there are some. And if we can build and connect a community, that's how we can level up our Star Trek fan and take it to the next level. And, and make ourselves all better Star Trek fans. And that's what the USS Dauntless is all about. So the USS Dauntless is one of the organizations that I represent. And what is the Dauntless? The Dauntless is a Star Trek fan club. Um, now in South Africa, we don't really have fan clubs. That's kind of an alien concept here. It's kind of an American thing. Um, when we use the word fan club, it conjures up images of a bunch of people sitting in a darkened basement, uh, comparing collectibles, sharing jokes about Star Trek, speaking in Klingon, especially with you here a couple of hours ago, <laughs> using strange jargon, all that kind of thing, right? That's, not, that's what a fan club sounds like. Well, all of that is true. That is part of what we do. Uh, except we don't really meet in basements anymore. We now use Discord, which is kind of it's the basement of the internet, let's be honest. Um, but it's much more convenient, and you can use it on your phone, and you can do it out in the sun while you're touching grass, which is amazing. But that's only part of what we do, right? Um, the USS Dauntless is a community of like-minded people, people who love Star Trek, obviously. Um, but you also want to share that love of Star Trek with other people who also love Star Trek. So that's the key component, first of all. We want to make that community, we want to build those connections, we want to establish that network of people around us. But just sharing our love on our own is not very satisfying. What we also want to do is promote Star Trek to other people, right? We want to, we want to have other people join the club, and in order to do that, we need to introduce them to Star Trek so that they can fall in love with it too, so that they can join our community. So promoting Star Trek is an important part of what the USS Dauntless is. But it's not just a form of entertainment. While it is that, right? We enjoy love. We love watching Star Trek because it's fun to watch. But it also is. It's more than just that. One of the things that sets Star Trek apart from a lot of other science fiction and entertainment in general is that it posits a future which is positive. 
where despite negative things that have happened in the past and even in the near future, um, humanity has risen above all of those things and have solved all of the major problems that we face today. Crime, poverty, war, disease, all of those are gone in the 23rd, 24th and 32nd century. Right? We, we look to that Star Trek future as a positive potential outcome for what we could do, for, as, a, as a species, what we could become. And therefore we can, um, as a community, as the US is dauntless, we do whatever we can to try and push the world in that direction, towards a better world, towards a world in which people don't need to suffer unnecessarily, and that kind of thing. So we take action out in the real world to do things to make life better for people. And that's what living the Starfleet life is all about. So, organizationally speaking, the USS Dauntless is, as I mentioned, a fan club. We are a, a group that's organized locally here in Cape Town. In fact, we are a Cape Town-based club. And we are a chapter of Starfleet, the International Star Trek Fan Association, Incorporated. So which is not the fictional Starfleet. We are not the United Federation of Planets Starfleet. That is a fictional thing, but we are modeled on them. Right? Superficially, we derive a lot of our, uh, our structures and our visual metaphors and our uh, visual styling based on that fictional Starfleet, but we are the real Starfleet here in the real world. Starfleet International was founded in uh, Texas in the 1970s. Um, it's now registered in South Carolina. We have thousands of members around the world. We've got hundreds of chapters in cities around the world. Um, in, I think it's 23 countries at the moment so far, including here, South Africa, where we have two active chapters at the moment. And we have been going here for you know, a couple of decades now. So we're, we're, we're making progress and we're getting there. Right? The US is not just one of those chapters. So what is a chapter? That's kind of a, a weird sound as well, a weird uh, word. A chapter in organizations like Starfleet International is an autonomous or semi-autonomous group of members based in a local area. Plenty of other international organizations also arrange themselves in chapters, and we do as well. So the USS Dauntless is a Cape Town group of uh, Starfleet International members. Now, we're not limited only to Cape Town. We have members, we the Dauntless have members in cities all over the place, um, but the bulk of our membership is here in Cape Town. Um, but then, what about what am I wearing? So, so I get a lot of comments and puns like these. I'm very uh, pleased to receive a lot of feedback. People enjoy looking at my cosplay. Unfortunately, this is not a cosplay. So I've, I've gotten out of the habit of correcting every time somebody says that to me, but it's not. So Starfleet International is one of the organizational structures that we borrow from the fictional Starfleet is ranks and titles. So we have ranks just like they have in Star Trek. In Star Trek, the United Federation of Planets, Starfleet derives their rank system off of the United States Navy, they use the same ranking system as the Navy does, and so we've adopted that system as well. So these pips on my collar, four uh, gold pips on a black panel, means Admiral, um, and that means that I'm the second highest rank from the top. It's taken me about 20 years to earn the rank of Admiral, it's been a lot of hard work, um, but that's part of the Starfleet life, is earning that, um, those uh, ranks of, uh, up the ladder. But ranks in Starfleet work a little bit differently to ranks in the Navy. So rank in the Navy, if I was a Navy Admiral, if I put in the kind of work to earn the rank of Admiral in the Navy, I would be expected to continue working in the, in the Navy at an Admiral level. It would grant me a certain level of legal authority over other members within the Navy. In Starfleet, it doesn't work like that at all. At least not in the real Starfleet. Here, um, your rank is a recognition of the time that you've already served. So I've put in a lot of time, a lot of effort over the years, and I've earned the rank of Admiral. You start out on day one, you start off as a crewman recruit, and you work your way up slowly by doing real world things. It's not a role playing group. We don't just pretend, we actually do stuff in the world, like the video showed you. We actually do things like going on away missions, like donating blood together, like having dinner, games days, all kinds of cool stuff. Every one of those things earns you progress up the ladder of ranks, all the way up to Admiral. Um, which brings me to the next point, which is, what is a Starfleet officer? So a Starfleet officer is obviously a member of Starfleet, but there are there's more to it than just that. And these are the values of being a Starfleet officer. And there are three core values that I like to talk about when we're talking about Starfleet officers. The first one is courage. If we look at Star Trek, if we look at the Starfleet officers on screen, the one thing that they all consistently display over and over again is courage. 
they are not or they are afraid to put themselves in situations that require a measure of effort, they have to endure discomfort, whether that's emotional or physical uh, discomfort, they put themselves in situations where they endure uh, discomfort because they know it's important. And that's something that a staff lead officer is prepared to do, to endure discomfort if that means doing something important, whether that's social anxiety, whether it's physical pain, like having a needle in your arm when you're donating blood, like, yeah, that's uncomfortable, nobody, nobody likes doing that, but it's important, so we do it anyway. We endure it because we have the courage to do so. The second value that I think is important is dedication. That's, that's a different kind of fortitude to courage. Dedication requires that you do a thing over and over again, regularly, again, because it matters. That means getting up and going to the gym every, you know, several times a week, or do running your 5K every Saturday morning, or whatever that kind of thing might be, because it matters. Because getting yourself into a physical condition where you're able to donate blood every two months, that matters. If you're healthy, you can do things that matter. The stronger you are, the more you can do. And the third important value, which is something that I've mentioned over and over again, is a love of Star Trek. But again, not just loving Star Trek as a form of entertainment, but recognizing the importance of Star Trek as a force for good in the world, as a vision for what humanity can become, and what we can do as an institution, the USS Dauntless, and a Starfleet International, and even as unaffiliated Star Trek fans, what we can do to bring up the world we have today closer to that Star Trek idea. But right, before I carry on, does anybody have anything they'd like to say, anything they'd like to ask? Fantastic. Excellent. That means that I'm answering all the questions ahead of time. I don't do it. So, if I, if you, as an unaffiliated Star Trek fan, would like to be interested, are interested in learning more about either the US, USS Dauntless or Starfleet International, I recommend checking out our various web uh, uh, presences. You can check out the Dauntless if you go to dauntless.co. Is that Dauntless? Correction. Sorry about that. It's at USS Dauntless on Instagram and on Twitter and on. Uh, TikTok and all those various places. We have a website there as well. If you come up to me uh, at any time during the con, I'm easy to recognize. I'm quite conspicuous. I can flash you a URL code that will take you straight to our website and you can sign up from there. Uh, being a member of the Dauntless is free of charge. We don't charge a fee. You're welcome to sign up. There is um, a couple of forms you have to fill out and then you're ready to go and you can join us in that Discord online base. You can join our, our online community where we chat and do things like that. We have an online chat all the time. We have weekly watch parties where we watch that week's episode of Star Trek. Of course, we're watching Discovery at the moment. Don't ask me how we get that because I'm not going to answer that question. But suffice to say, we watch it together every Friday night. Uh, we have online gaming sessions. We play Star Trek online. We also have in-person get-togethers on the regular. We get together every two months to go and donate blood together because that is the, thing, the single most efficient thing you can do to make a difference in somebody's life. If you're not a billionaire and you don't have unlimited financial resources to donate, and if you're not a medical professional yourself, the thing that you can do that is the most efficient thing to do to save another person's life is donate blood. It costs you nothing other than a few minutes of discomfort once every two months, and giving one unit of blood can save up to three lives. So that's the thing that we do. Every couple of months we get together and we have a fun social breakfast together, maybe we can play a couple of board games over breakfast, and then we head downstairs at uh, Blue Root Mall and we donate blood together and do what we can to save some lives, because that's living the Starfleet life. We also have regular, what we call, mission readiness events. So in order to donate blood, you need to be fit and healthy. The fitter you are and healthier you are, the more you can do to contribute to society. So we promote fitness and health. Not just physical fitness, although that's very important. We, we offer 5K runs every Saturday morning. We get together at Park Run, and we run together. If we can't run, then we walk. If we can't walk, we volunteer. All of those things make a difference. But also mental stimulation. We have a Duolingo group where we learn different languages together, and we compete in terms of our XP. And you don't only have to learn Klingon, you can learn any language you like, it still counts. Uh, we have um, courses where, you, so we have challenges where you can learn martial arts and earn promotions that way. So studying on your own, or you can teach the rest of the crew by online classes, whatever way you like. These are all activities that the Dauntless League are doing on a weekly basis. So we have a very active social calendar where we are constantly engaged with each other, with Star Trek, and with the world, because that's living the Star Trek life. So, I ask you, do you have what it takes to be a Starfleet officer? Fantastic. Are you brave enough to be a Starfleet officer? Excellent. Yes, fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. 
are you dedicated enough to be a Starfleet officer? And the most important one, the one that brings us together, do you love Star Trek enough to be a Starfleet officer? Yeah. That's what I love to hear. Thank you. That's so that's so great to hear. And I'm really glad that everybody came on today. This is a really uh, it's really heartwarming to see so many Star Trek fans in one room. And uh, I would love to hear from you all individually. I'd love to see you join the Dauntless so we can chat online. We can we can uh, gather in our digital basement. And before before I hand the mic back to Zay, I've got a couple of more videos. If DJ would like to cue them up for us. Do you love Star Trek enough to be a Star Trek officer? Do you have what it takes? The Starfleet life with the U.S.'s daughters. Are you dedicated enough to be a Starfleet officer? Do you have what it takes? The Starfleet life with the U.S.'s daughters. Are you brave enough to be a Starfleet officer? Do you have what it takes? Thank you so much. And if there are any more comments or questions, please feel free. We have one there. Okay, I'm just going to ask for the, the, the other microphone on the stage there. I'm going to come over here. Very good, very good. We hear you. This recruit, this recruit has been waiting here since the show opened. I was like, is everything okay at home? Oh, no, what is going on? Where does it start? Um, I wanted to ask about uh, readiness and mental health, what, like wellness and all of that. But like, what about accessibility? About doing park runs and stuff. Those of us who can't participate in that sort of thing, what options are there? Those of us who can't donate blood or medical reasons, what options are there? That's a great question. So the question was, if you don't have the physical capability to participate in some of the more active physical activities, like park run, for example, what other alternatives are there? And there are plenty of options. So the only thing that we ask all of our members to participate in regularly is the blood donation mission. And, and that's even if you can't donate blood, because obviously not everybody can. Something like one out of every four people cannot physically donate blood. So we ask that you come anyway and support the people that can donate because it sucks donating alone, right? It's uncomfortable, it's kind of awkward, nobody wants to do that, and it's a fun social event anyway. But what about the other stuff, the other physically challenging stuff? That's okay. Everybody is at a different uh, step in their Star Trek fan journey. And the same is also true of our physical fitness journey. Some of us are just starting out, some of us are far ahead, and that's okay. Whatever you're doing in your own space to improve yourself and make yourself the best possible version of yourself, that's what happens. So we have lots of other mechanisms on board that recognize as many, as many different kinds of activities as possible. Physical is one pillar, but even then, it's, it's not the only thing. So we have, for example, a fitness challenge. So every month, the, uh, the, uh, we all uh, uh, contribute the number of steps that we log, that are logged on our phone or our watch onto a central database, but it doesn't necessarily have to be steps. So if somebody, for example, can't do a lot of walking, but maybe you can do some stretching or some tai chi or some yoga, something that's a little bit less physically challenging, that can be converted into an equivalent number of steps and can still be logged on the system. So um, what we consider uh, one of our core principles is infinite diversity and infinite combinations. So we try to make sure that as many different people with as many different physical capabilities as possible um, can still contribute in as full a way as possible. All that we ask is that you show up. That's the most important. 
love that. I really, really love that. Make some noise. That, that, that's a huge make some noise right there. Um, what I want to say before I do my spiel, right, I just want to ask, are there any other questions? Uh, any other comments anything to add to the law? No? Okay. So here's the thing. Here's what I love about being a trick. Right? And I'm a novice myself. In fact, if there was a level below people what the lowest, you know, I'd probably be that guy. Right? But here's the thing. What I love is that for many of us, our families, whatever they may be, it's really something that gives us something that we belong to, something larger. That's why something like Comic Con Cape Town is an awesome thing because it's a place for us as a collective to meet, to want, and to actually express for what Admiral is offering you, right? what is offering you is an opportunity to create not only every week but every day. Now, I've been talking a lot about mental health today, I've been talking a lot about just good emotional well-being because I believe part and parcel of being a fan of anything is really nurturing that inner fiber, you know? And I really, really, really want to each and every one of you to give some thought to this, you know? The journey is a lot easier. We need to do it with the crew. So, go boldly, be dauntless, bring the thunder, do the thing and all of that, and make some noise for Admiral. Alright, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. But hey, guys, don't have to be. Run away, right? That's, even though that's the end of the session,